Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's episode of the Digital, Digital, Digital Fireside. I'm joined today, as almost always, with Luke Curtin. Hello, how are you guys doing? And uh, Luke playing on his phone during recording, Curtin. Just writing it down. Just writing notes so, down. I see what you're doing. Uh, we're going to kind of... Got him. <laughs> we're going to kind of do a little bit of a uh, freeform episode today. Just a little bit of filler. Um, and stuff... You know, it's like in Naruto, you can like you can skip it, but it's it's kind of, sometimes it's kind of fun. I mean, at least it's not part of the action that is supposed to be there. Like, oh, oh, and Dragon Ball Z explosions, yelling, and then true, uh, true. Uh, oh, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> that's my power level. Just All like, right, knocked over the camera. I can't believe that stayed on. <laughs> well, we'll have to edit that one out. Yeah. <laughs> 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 As it's going to play a weird for radio. It's like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> 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 Dropped everything. Um, so anyway, a few things have happened. Kind of, Luke, how you been? What, what's been going on? Uh, pretty slow. Just had some normal work. Ever since the wedding, it's just been kind of like getting all of our business and, you know, marriage stuff out of the way. It's just been like no time to really relax and do anything. But it's been all right. You know, I can't really complain because of what you signed up for, you know. True. You did sign something. I, did, yeah, I literally sign signed something. Yeah. yeah. What about you? Um, I had a, I took a meeting yesterday um, and set something up for, I have a conference call out West this Friday for something that uh, we're trying to get a little something, something together for next year because it is the, both the 20th and the 10th anniversary of something. And uh, there's a few interested parties. Um, we're going to talk about that this Friday, see if anything happens. Uh, with all these negotiations, in my experience, they've all kind of been uh, hit or miss. I guess they never Guys. hit, huh? You know? Because there's, there's oh. nothing there yet. Um, this is why we need those radio like sound Bell Delphine soundboard. <laughs> um so yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm going to be talking to a few different people. I'm not going to mention the studio name or anything like that. But uh, apparently the person I talked to yesterday said there was a few interest parties that are excited about talking with me about it. Um, ideally, you know, we can see if we can make something happen. I'm excited about that. Learn, I've learned over time and with age to kind of temper my expectations. Um, because I remember the first time this happened, I was like, 20 in my college dorm room, like, oh my God, dad, mom, I'm going, I'm going to sell my shit. I'm going, I'm going on an adventure. <laughs> yeah, I'm going on an adventure. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. I know, uh, I know what this is, though. And you don't even have to tell. You haven't gone over this with me, but I know what this is. You know yes. why? Why? Because I just know you. And speaking of, uh -huh. we didn't get to celebrate our anniversary. One year of Oh my God. Oh my God. It was like last week or something. Fuck. It was last week. It was just last weekend. Didn't we put up the episode around that time, though? I don't know. It was the 29th or something like that. Something yeah, but that. we didn't. At this point, we didn't see each other. In the yeah, we weren't seeing each other. No, no. <laughs> we weren't serious. Not like now, but you know. But I know what that is. It's, it's going to be the Ben Drown live action movie with You're Samuel not... Jackson and Jack Black. I'm sorry. Samuel Jackson Fucking, is playing Ben. I cock. hate you. <laughs> Just the black part. This <laughs> this poor fan base has been literally dragged around like through the Ben's ringer. 10 inch cut. Like, um, but no. because back when I didn't know any better, like I was like, and so as soon as this starts happening, like guys, guess what? I blast it out on Twitter, blast it out on Facebook. They're gonna make a movie, so you get all these people yeah. really riled up. It's like, oh, it's gonna be Clyde Barker. It's gonna be great, yada yada yada. And like this time, just nothing, nothing. See, there's See, nothing. Guys, you learned happen. his lesson. I've learned my lesson. You kicked his ass so much. <laughs> You beat so me down. many times that no, now he just knows. I, that was totally my fault. Like I mean, I I was a idealistic young child, and now I'm a jaded, bitter old man. So now that's kind of the natural. Martha, <laughs> why did you <laughs> say that name? Uh, so we'll see what happens. I'm kind of excited for that. I'm going over a few different negotiation. Uh, I am excited for Friday, and I I'm very curious to see what the future holds with that. Mm -hmm. But I'm also totally nonchalant about it too. So it's like. Whatever I could take, it. I'm like Sasuke. I could just take it or leave it. So, <laughs> someone didn't see the show. <laughs> yeah, I really haven't. I just know someone. it through memes. Like I know <laughs> Sasuke's like the, the brooding one. He just always sits like this, and he's like, that's like two scenes of the first part. <laughs> okay. He does that. Whatever, man. I'm just, he's just like Batman. He doesn't just perch <laughs> over the village. Whatever. Whatever. 
Um, so we'll see what happens with that. That that could be cool. If I, you probably won't hear anything about it for a long time. <laughs> Maybe this will be the last time you hear something about it. Period. It's like, oh, thank God. Um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, I, I've been doing that, uh, and I'm trying to think of what else really. Uh, da, 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 da. I've got a few other things in the pipeline, but nothing crazy right now. Um, but in other kind of political news, um, I so okay. So I've I've never hidden the fact that like I'm a huge like Tulsi Gabbard stan. I have uh, been a fan of her because for me personally, and this is gonna get a little political here for a second because. Up until about a month or two ago, a few months ago, really, I didn't really give a, a damn about what happens at the DNC, the Democratic primaries. It's false. I'm going to call you on that lie. Because we did do an episode predicting, of course, but like I'm not the one that tuned in the debates or whatever. I just kind of like read Twitter and who was doing stupid gaffes and who did gotchas or whatever. Still no Michelle. But... Still no Michelle. So the, I think the Michelle Dark Horse dream is dead. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen at this point, which is a bummer. That would have been made for a pretty funny theatrical experience. But um, I, I think ever since, ever since, because I, I was a supporter of Bernie Sanders um, back in 2016. And I think a lot of people, a lot of young Democrats saw the way, especially with the WikiLeaks stuff happening that was coming out about how the DNC basically kind of was giving a lot of unfair advantages to their preferred candidate, which was Hillary Clinton. Um, that stuff about Donna Brazil feeding questions to Hillary and kind of defending it. And then, you know, I think between all of that, it, it really disenfranchised me. And I would assume probably thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of other young Democrats um, from like believing in the the purity of the genuine process of the whole thing. Um, so this time around, I haven't really given a shit about following this stuff until I started to become more aware of like, uh, Tulsi Gabbard. And like, for me, she has been a candidate that I think could possibly be the only one that would be able to beat Trump because she is, hear me out. Because she is the kind of person that is able to reach those moderate Republicans and independents that had been pushed away in 2016. I think that her stance, her anti-war stance, um, I think a lot of her uh, openly calling out a lot of the mainstream kind of politicians in terms of like taking uh, donation money to support this whole impeachment thing. She actually does not even she doesn't support the whole impeachment thing that's currently going on now. Um I think that, you know, her service out in Iraq really helps make her informed with a lot of military uh, stuff more than, you know, someone like you know, other, anyone else. Really, in anyone else. Um, and, and she is the only one, to my knowledge. And again, this is coming from someone who I haven't been following it completely. So Biden could totally be I'm totally against never fucking Biden. But like there could be someone else. But she's the only one to my knowledge is that has really had the balls to go after big tech, which is becoming a bigger and bigger issue and a censorship involved with that. And I think that, you know, her even her bills about um, how was it? It was her fair media coverage bill or something is a, is a great step forward that is going to would potentially reach out to those moderate Republicans and those independents and bring them back into the fold because they kind of just voted. I'm imagining they voted for Trump just out of like, well, I'm not going to vote for fucking Hillary Clinton and I don't want to vote for Joe Biden. So. So what about the Yang man? Andrew Andrew Yang. Yang. Yang Yang gang. Yeah. Yang is interesting. And I know that you are a big Yang guy and I heard you got a big Yang. So it's like, (laughs) I, I want to hear more about him. I, the basic things that I know, um, Oh, but sorry, but really quick, before we get into um, Yang, because I, I want to know about him. I I just wanted to say um, this is being done on October 2nd. On October 1st, like Tulsi was out. And like until October 1st, Tulsi was out. She wasn't going to make the cutoff for the, the October 15th, I believe it is, debate. Um, and she just crossed the finish line at the last second with like the last amount of like popular support or whatnot. And 
She's a motherfucking dark horse. This crazy son of a bitch is still going to be on that damn stage. And I bet you a lot of establishment DNC members are very afraid of that because they saw her when she went after Kamala yeah. or Kamala. I'm sorry. I don't yeah. know her pronunciation. <clears throat> she ruined that woman when she right. called. She she never Kamala never recovered from that. And, and like, I think they are nervous that she's going to try and go after from what she's talking about, she had some sort of quote where she was talking about um, how she uh, is really against uh, a lot of the big frontrunners in the Democratic National Convention taking donation money in the name of supporting impeachment. And she seems that, and so it, some pundits are kind of like theorizing like she's probably going to try and go after Warren um, this time. And I think that that has a lot of people. If the DNC is the same way it was back in 2016, which they didn't, to my knowledge, shake up too much after that, I think that they have already picked their favorite, that they're going to try and, like, make it a little bit easier on that person. I think it's Warren. And I think that they are kind of scared shitless about, you know, her potentially getting kamala And so I, I am just excited that she's on. I'm... I'm I don't know what's going to happen. Right. Uh, I yeah, love no the one. fact that she's at least raising awareness for these issues. The big tech one is, if the more you look into it, it, it is terrifying. And You're talking about the stuff with China, and I'm I'm talking about right here in the United States okay. where they because are messing with algorithms. Like there was a study done, and like that they are basically if you use VPNs from different, you know, into VPN yeah, yeah. to Ireland or to for Russia or something. You will get no, like quote unquote normal results, but if you use it in the United States, you will get different results. So it's being done in our own home country. Wait, 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 what do you so mean? like YouTube, like YouTube, like SEO indexing. So like if you type in, say, let, let's use my story for example. Like you say, you you type in um, Ben drowned. Normally, you're going to get the top, you know, uh, ranking things of like what gets the most traffic. Mm -hmm. So. That to me, as it seems fair, seems like okay. The top listing should be the ones that get the most clicks, that are the most relevant, yada yada yada. Uh, so what the issue is, and what kind of Tulsi was raising this this like lawsuit she was suing Google about was that they were basically fubbling, fubbling. <laughs> they were they were flubbing the algorithm so that even though more people would click on, you know. Been drowned, yada yada yada. What appears first is like, um, like Slenderman, or like why Ben Drowned is a dirty, dirty old pervert, or like yeah. basically stuff that stuff didn't that, technically yeah. like fairly get to the top. And I think that that is a huge problem when it's happening here. And if God forbid this technology, you know, is is bought for like somewhere like China or somewhere like in Russia. You know, people that could, and this is playing devil's advocate, people that are, could potentially be critical of a certain regime or something like that, that are getting a lot of media attention or getting a lot of like, you know, YouTube attention or uh, clicks or whatnot, they're going to be basically pushed down and down and down and down despite the fact that they should be towards the top. So the, all the, th the other things that people see that are trying to and glean more information about that are the curated results of what the technology, the tech company wants you to see. So it doesn't become as much of a democracy, so to speak. Um, but there is a, um, you know, it becomes very kind of like authoritarian, I guess, to make a, a grand general statement. And we're seeing it starting to happen now. And I think a lot of people don't really care because it's happening primarily towards conservatives. And I think it's a slippery ass slope because like, well, what happens, you know, when someone goes against that isn't a conservative or whatever and they start to kind of have fall victim to the same uh, issue. And none of the people that are running, to my knowledge, maybe Yang is one of because he seems pretty savvy with that stuff, but Tulsi is the one who is the biggest kind of proponent of that. And I, I think that that is a huge issue that Donald Trump, of course, it's happening to him. I don't think he fully, I, I think it, it has passed him by. He's too old at this point. Um, to really understand how significantly it can affect this entire country. Um, and, and I think that we need someone like her, ideally, someone like her that would be in 
to the uh, to the office. But so, so what do you think other than what you like about her? What do you think could be something that you are worried people will bring up about her that she won't be able to quote unquote recover from? Like let's say in the next debate, what are you worried about her answering? Like what questions do you feel like she's not prepared for? Well, so I, I think that she. I think she's going to get slammed for not joining in on the impeach Trump bandwagon. I think that is something that uh, a lot of Democratic candidates, if not, I I don't say all of them because, again, I don't know. But I know the majority of Democratic candidates are going all in on. And I think this is another issue that is going to backfire once again, as it has done historically for the past three years, you know, and make everyone else look and make everyone who is supporting it so badly, like, look bad. And I, I, I don't. And she's just like, I, I don't like Donald Trump. That's why I'm running against him. Like, I, I will kick him out my own way. And I, I think, you know, after what was that? What was that word? Exonerated. After all, after all that Mueller stuff, after all that shit that started happening, this is going on for almost this whole four term. years. Yeah, whole yeah it's insane. So. None of it happened. And I remember talking to my friends that were very, you know, pro-liberal, very hard left. And, you know, they watched a lot of, you know, like CNN and that kind of stuff. And they were just like, Alex, he's about to get it. Like, they got him. I had had that exact conversation with them probably five times, five separate times. And they're like, this time for sure. They got him. So Every single time this <clears throat> motherfucker slipped through their fingers. Yeah, they're and they all look like idiots. They're BDing you. They're, <laughs> what BD? What, what is BDing that? BDing you. What does that mean? Been drowning you. They've been they've been drowning me. It's um, almost there, guys. I swear uh, it's gonna happen this time. But no, really, like I mean, you're probably just like devil advocate, devil's advocate. You probably weren't like, yeah, I really hope, guys. It was probably just like, I know it's not gonna happen, so I'm not gonna have any type of feel about it. I'm not gonna have a, an emotion about it because I know it's just not gonna happen. <laughs> like, there, like there comes a time where it's like I feel like I have to, you know, I'm not gonna argue with him about it anymore because it's like. At this point, too. at this point, no way. It'd be it, different if it was a, even a year ago. You could have that's two two more years to. In 2016, I probably like in 2016 <laughs> or 17, I probably would have like. No, it's probably because that information really came out about yeah, um, like, all that stuff last, back like last summer. Yeah, maybe like, then I would have given it a good shot. But like, I don't know how he got away though. Like, it's it was so clear. It was just firing everybody that said anything about him. Anything. He could have said. Yeah, he could have said he ties his shoes. Backwards. And what, what are you doing? <laughs> the fuck did you, <laughs> the fuck you just say? You're fired. This You're is fired. Like, not, like, I used Trump, to do that for a reality TV show. You're fired. <laughs> not literally like, I didn't mean, see, I knew that. I, I didn't mean it like that, but like, he literally, that's what he does. He just, let's figure it out. Yeah. No matter what, it's a little open. No matter what, uh, what people did and what people said, it didn't matter because I guess president is president. But you can't tell me, I don't know if you're Republican or not, but as a Republican, do you think or, I'm a or conservative for or sake. conservative? No, I don't understand how you couldn't even entertain these questions. A lot of them, while it's going on, they're just like, "No way, it can't be true. This is not happening. You guys are just salty. You lost all this stuff." It's like, okay, but okay, maybe that all of that is true. Like, let's say we are salty. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, can't you take that and then kind of look at it like, okay, this is kind of weird. It is kind of weird. What is going on here? Like, this is this is I a. Can search the web for that. <laughs> Just don't, search don't let her search. It's kind of weird on the web. <laughs> Siri, a, no. There's a lot of stuff that you have to explain. You can't just shrub off with generalizations and and fa- non facts is what they call them. So like things that you can say that sound true or big word type thing. Like mm-hmm. in a debate, you try to use big words that the audience doesn't really know. And so when they're listening to what you're saying, it sounds like oh this guy really knows what he's doing. I don't know what he's saying. It's over my head. That's how smart he is. You know that type of thing. Yeah. You can't use that type of rhetoric. You had to have asked those questions, especially when that whole ass Mueller report did come out and it was available for purchase. And no, I bet no, like, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say no one People bought it. Comb through that. They shit, comb through, yeah, man. the they, experts, all that stuff, comb through it. You took the stand, all that it. stuff. They couldn't get them. You could get your own. You, you could. They couldn't. I I believe because you, they, if they, they, they could took have, out they everybody. I I. It's like I it's literally know, like man. an old movie. Like if you say. Who's your leader? And you get sniped at the, like right when you're about to say who's your leader. That's exactly what's happened. As soon as they say this is what happened, you're fired. And now because you're fired, what you say doesn't matter anymore because you're not in a position of power to say anything. Yeah. Like we're not asking you anymore. 
because you're a nobody. You're you're now even though it may be the same exact thing you were gonna say ten minutes ago. For the it record, doesn't matter because you're not in the seat. I abstained. I didn't even vote in the 2016 <laughs> election because I'm like I'm not I'm not gonna vote for Hillary. I, I you didn't like Gary Johnson. Gary jo- maybe I should have I should have wrote him in, um, but was not gonna vote for Hillary. Um, there are Watch too many the comments are like you can't say shit. <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> I, don't a shit. <laughs> I don't give it. I wasn't gonna vote for Hillary. I would have voted for Bernie. It. Um, it started off rocky. Like she won the popular vote, but you know, electoral college is a joke. <laughs> so it started off at a bad like. But this the thing is because I I've heard this electoral I wasn't, college just argument keep it clear, before. I'm not a Hillary fan, just to keep that right. Yeah, just to put that out there. I, I have heard this electoral college argument before. In fact, we had someone on this podcast try you know talk to me about it, and that is all fair and good, but. You have to realize that even if even if you like won the popular vote but lost the electoral college, you have to realize that was the whole yeah. game to begin with. Like you, no. yeah, you won. It's like getting more singles I, instead of home runs. Yeah, you got yeah, more, you have more yeah, hits, but I we mean, have the like, runs. You have to know that that's what you were playing for. So, like, <laughs> it's your fault you didn't get those states, man. Like, it, it, it's it was rough. Anyway, try harder, get good. Anyway, I, I but I do like it. I do like a lot that Hillary did pave the way so we could have people like Tulsi, like Warren, um, like I don't like Kamala Harris, but like like her. But like so now no one bats an eye. And I, I think that it's is true. awesome. I think I that's so that. damn no one cool. thinks twice now when it's no, like yeah. a woman. It's yeah. just like, OK, so what do you think? It's not really, you know. Yeah, I know what you mean. That's, yeah, that's I, a good I think point. that's really cool. And I, I think that because um, I honestly, God, you know. I don't see who who has a shot at beating Trump. I think it's hard enough to beat a sitting president for a second term. It's hard yes, enough. Yes, that's very hard. That's um, no matter who it, who it was. Who, what, no matter who it is. Um, if the economy keeps on doing Mr. You know, good and we stay out of a war, you know, I, I don't like his – well, I'm not going to say. Didn't JFK – JFK did it, right? He beat Nixon. He got shot in the head. But he was still president. <laughs> He yeah. won the presidency. Yes, I mean, it, it can't, I'm saying, I'm I'm saying it can happen. Can't so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you have to be just super charming, and you know, JFK was a you. one of a kind man. <laughs> yeah, I, God like, bless him. It's like he is. when I like. <laughs> that's why I love that she has an eight election, dude. Because think about that just for a brief second. Who would they were running against? Yeah, Bush is gone. No matter what, it's two new people. McCain. Yeah. You know he is everything going for him, but the one person you can't run against. <laughs> Is a charming young black <laughs> yeah, guy for the first it's time. It's like, like, God, it's like really. Yeah, <laughs> like he was like a war vet. He's old white dude, Republican <laughs> side. Had some good policies. Everyone loved him. Did Obama just flip the damn? Obama's like, like Guess you know, what? What's up? Hey, Chicago guys. stand up. <laughs> <laughs> enough is enough. Yeah, like that. That's like that's like the perfect. I mean, he, I would say he paved the way, but I don't. I don't see the. I don't see another black president for a long time. Really? You don't think so? I don't. I just don't. I just don't know. I don't know anyone in Congress, obviously. Just like, I mean, we're, 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 just, not there. we're just not there. So I don't yeah. know who's brewing right now, who's getting their name around, you know, whispers. Yeah. But I just don't see, I feel like it's going to take a little bit before because I think the next black president's going to be elected when people don't think of him as a black president. It's just going to be the guy. Because yeah. right now we're still in an era of you think of people as a gender or race. Yada yada. So if we're I'm not playing, trying to be some type of like utopia, like oh no one sees color, no one's, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it'll get to a point where we're so desensitized to, we're so tired of the race argument. Yeah, it's not like you don't care. Like in your neighborhood, you probably still care. You feel uncomfortable, comfortable, whatever you want. Yeah. But as a un, like a union, <clears throat> I think it'll get to the point where we're so desensitized that you'll just like, kind of like how you just said about the women, you're just gonna, okay, I don't care. Just show me facts. What, what do you got for yeah. us? Type thing. Almost like a business. Yeah. Um, so tell me about, cause I, I do want to have a follow up like question after this, but I do want to hear about Yang. Cause you know, I'm, I'm now starting to kind of, now that Tulsi's back in it and I, I'm like, God, she's awesome. I love her. Yeah, she, yeah. She's so good. Like she's got, she's, what was it? Like a four term Congresswoman, uh, she's from Hawaii, same place as Barack Obama. She's had kind of a similar come up as Barack Obama. Like, if you look at it, like, look at their history and kind of where they've kind of come from. I don't think Obama went over in Iraq for a year, but, like, Hmm. and served in Iraq in a combat duty. But um, I'd like, you know, what she has to offer on her platform. And I think that, you know, um, she probably doesn't have a chance, but I would like to see her take down one more behemoth of a DNC candidate before she goes down. But even as you say so, 
according to you, there is no, there is none. So what? There's there's no one else to take down. If if her whole aim is to take down everyone, <clears throat> that that's not going to win. You need to have the aim of, you know, I'm going to right. I'm going to win the presidency. You're right. It's kind of like I, t- I I think of it as a sports analogy right now, as a, as a as a, car- a ball carrier in football. Your mm-hmm. goal is to not. You can do this, and it can be just as effective, right? Your goal is to not truck everyone that's in your way to get to the touchdown. Right. right? Don't truck them like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your goal is to get <laughs> north and south to the end zone. That's true. And if someone grabs you along the way and you know slows you down, you shrug them off. That's great. Or you go out and you you truck them. That's fine. But she's on that mission. You know, as a coach, you'd be like, no, 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 don't go intentionally running into people. Why? Yes. Just run your race, get to the point, and then see what they can do to stop you. I think I, I think that's what Yang's doing. I think that's exactly why he's getting so much like so much steam. Especially he just raised in the last. I just saw the article. He just raised another two million towards his. Uh, his campaign without doing like he's not doing anything. He's just going on talk shows. He's being a rock smart. star. He was on Joe Rogan. He, he was yeah, he's he's a smart guy. Go, he, he is smart. He's an entrepreneur. He's following in the Trump footsteps, but he's on the other side now. Mm-hmm. You know, or Reagan, whatever the, the the non-political footsteps, I should say. And I think his main lead, yes, is a thousand dollars per month for every American UBI. adult. Yes, yeah, that makes sense because yeah, the Amazon taxes stuff like that's ridiculous. They should they haven't paid taxes. Like what the hell? You're worth billions of dollars. Everyone uses you across the world, not just United States. They're gonna use that money that should have been there for not just Amazon, but other companies that are doing the same thing. And he's gonna put that back into the economy by giving it to us. I had a good conversation with my friends who's from a not so good area here. Mm-hmm. He's like, that'd be great, but guess what? It's not gonna matter. And it kind mm-hmm. of made sense. I was like, wait, why not? You'd get an extra $1,000 a month. Would you feel more comfortable happy? Because, yeah, people aren't going to change. Like, nothing's going to change. Like, our economy may be a little bit better, but the people themselves are still going to be people. Like drug dealers, even if they get out of it, they have all the money in the world. They don't want to leave their situation because mm-hmm. that's how they – Yeah. That's how that's how it is. Like even like people who, you know, uh, he knows an NFL player that grew up doing that stuff, went to the NFL. He's still drug dealing Damn. just because it's a part of – what he does you know it's part it's just an extra like he doesn't need it i mean he's no superstar by any means but he's making the 500 minimum you know yeah so what are you doing drug dealing? and he's like yeah it's just what they do man like it's not gonna change anything same thing with people who spend money like that it's not gonna you know he, he's taking right. it he's it taking it out of like a, people yeah but not enough to move the needle i think i i get what you're saying i think uh, on paper it'll look great it'll look absolutely fantastic but I, again, I could be wrong. I like all his other, I like other things he says, but at the same time, like his main point, I don't like how his main point is um, the thousand dollars a month thing, and that's what people are sticking to. Well, at some point, I it's wish like people branding, would address like the you other wanna, thing. Yeah. right? But I wish he would have branded something else, like Obama did healthcare. You know, yeah, you know everything. Um, what was it? What's, it? what's what's Warren's? Warren doesn't even have one, I don't think, and that's a problem. I, like, I'm going to get into that in a second. I'm not okay, <laughs> but I'm saying it's like. I don't understand why candidates, these go arounds, have to feel the need to go after what you, what, like, because Obama did it right. Like, he didn't really go after him until it was probably just the last two. Then you go after, you blow, you throw punches. He right? had the greatest moment when he was debating Romney. This was way after the primary. Er, primary yeah, it's, it's the last two, he was final like, two people. Yeah. Please proceed. No, he was, uh, Mitt Romney, he was, he was running against him and he was, they were in the debates. He was like, Go ahead, or please proceed, Senator, or something. He was. It was the most. You have to look. It was, like, it was like a like a savage. Yeah, it was. It was savage he's still before president. 2016. Yeah, he's, <laughs> it's like he's still 2016 president. flipped the script. As calm as you can do. Yeah, yeah please proceed. A savage, you know, like, like you know your place. Yeah, okay, know your place. I mean, I wish Obama would run again, but um, <laughs> <laughs> just come out. It's like, hey, that's what someone said. I, I someone said something similar to that the other day. I think it might have been Molly, and I was like, you know, what? it is weird. It has been really. It really has been four years. Yeah, like everyone still talks about Obama as if it's like recent. <laughs> like he was a once in a lifetime. I would <clears throat> right, but know. I'm saying like now, you, like there's no one to blame for the Trump stuff, like his policies, all that stuff. There's no one to blame for anything that's going right. Like oh, it's the people before you. It's like well, not all of this. Everything that we're going through right now is not. You can put some on Obama, sure. Put it on. I put thirty percent on him, sure. Yeah. Well, I'm the other 70%. Oh, it wasn't, it wasn't me. It was these guys who don't know how to do their job. <laughs> it wasn't Trump. I swear to God. Like, at some point, you have to take accountability for it. And I don't think, you know, that's why I feel like Trump's not going to, I think, the, the it's going to be another Democratic president this next time around. 
I don't think Trump. You really think so? I, I don't think. Okay. I don't know who. Like okay. we, we don't know who. We'll see. But I don't think it will be. I think they got it wrong in 2016 with Trump. They could have had better. I think even. It was just like a fight. It's like a boxing match. You put like <laughs> a like welterweight against a heavyweight, and it's like you should have put Sanders up instead. And whatever. I'm not Sanders butthurt about it. I'm I'm not really butthurt about Sanders at all. Like, I didn't think anyone who's that old. I think I don't know. If Trump was older than Bernie. Yeah, but he but, looks better. <laughs> he looks better, healthier. He looks more like a leader. Image is yeah, yeah, it's big time. Especially Bernie just went literally yesterday or something. He just went back in the hospital for like. Yeah, like, a, like I don't know what it was. It was, it was a heart, chest pains, heart. I, I yeah. think they're still oh, developing. Imagine stuff if this man's that. in office. You're, you have another dead president. And he's now not. You don't know what to do. That he's is not like win. single-handedly put him out. And, yeah, um, he's done. So okay, so to back to your analogy of like the football, like kind of pushing everyone out of the way. I I think that that onus is on me for kind of like picturing it like that. We're like, oh, I'll take someone else down in the in the DNC or whatever because I think. That is me carrying over feelings from 2016 where I still kind of believe that this is a lot of pageantry and it doesn't really matter because of the way that with the WikiLeaks and seeing the way that they kind of treated it like they treated their favorite candidate against someone who arguably had more populist, popular support um, at the time, I kind of feel like it. It there's there's like two DNC sweethearts and... They are going to fix it so that they get more speaking time. They get more whatever, like uh, they get easier access to questions. They get, you know, more you know celebrity endorsements or and they get more, you know, fundraising and that kind of stuff. So it makes it impossible for the little guys to compete. That is my own bitterness kind of talking where I'm like, OK, Tulsi, you're back in one last time. Go for it. Just kind of. But, but the if guy, that the 2016 guy. didn't happen, I would be like. I'm all in for Tulsi. She's gonna. I would be like, hey, push each other, elevate each other up. But like, but the guy who won the presidency didn't do those things at all. What do you mean? I guess he did one of those two things. One, he Donald won. Trump? He single handedly won because of, I honestly think because of three things: his market, like his it, Yang's taking a book out of him. Mm-hmm. I swear to God, he just got like Yang hats and all that stuff. Math, make America think harder. He's t- taking the the pageantry <laughs> part of it. Like that That's that good. stuff. He. Is going to Trump went to all the talk shows, everyone like mm-hmm. way more than anyone else. Like he, he went on he'd WWE. Come on, he'd come you come over that? Well, he he he's, yeah, he <laughs> went on WWE. <laughs> he went for on a long time. WWE. This dude like, was trying to be in everyone's faces, which is yeah. I mean, it's it's smart. I mean, people know who you are now. So if, I doubt. But I don't see that kind of juggernaut from the DNC though. I don't see anyone doing that. Yang's already like, doing it. He's going. He's going on. He Kimmel was on four WWE. Times. No, I'm saying like he's he's going on Rogan, like he said. He's going on all the the late nights, like okay. multiple times. I think what's his name? Fallon single handedly won him the presidency. He was on Fallon like twenty times doing sketches, making fun of himself. Oh, he's a nice guy. He, he can joke around. Like he's a relatable guy. I don't think Fallon. That type of stuff. Fallon like, hasn't had Yang on. <laughs> I, I, I think it was an amalgamation that. of a ton of stuff that got him the president. But I'm sure. I'm. I'm, you know, I'm. He was a bulldozer, and I don't right. see any kind of bulldozer and that's, problem. That's, that's a good answer. point because I was about to say, would you rather have what they did? Because you're saying the questions, you know, get easier questions, fewer questions. Trump did didn't get that that same service on the other side, but he did he it himself. Disrespected the whole he, thing. He would just he would just be like, "Okay, Alex's question, Alex's turn." As soon as you start talking, because you're not allowed to answer it, right? So I can't just cut you off. As soon as you start answering, he's like, "All right, five, four, two, three. All right, that's a bunch of people. <laughs> it's like, "Well, sir, sir, sir." No, I still have a microphone. You can't talk. It's like he just. You know, like you say, it's a bulldozer. You just cut everyone down, and everyone's sitting there waiting to be, you know, polite, political, like yeah. be yeah, yeah. safe face. He's like, no. <laughs> so like those three things, I think won him. But see, for didn't Yang in the first debate though? He had a record quiet. low of speaking time right. because he was the only one that tried to follow the rules of the right. debate. And now you're saying it's different happening. now. But now see what's happening to him. I, I see. I have a rock star. Dude. Okay, I will tune in. He's for doing sure. crowd ways. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. He's. He's he's gonna I'm swear he's gonna be the final two of the DNC for sure, that's for sure, because okay. he was a, a unknown like you th- like you said yeah an unknown person to just put aside oh it's, I need everyone someone wants like that. minority train everyone wants to you know I need someone that. like that to give me hope again in the this process I'm like I, I I could be for that I could be for I I hope Tulsi wins and against all odds I hope something happens where she gets. But High enough to get like on a VP ticket or something with someone. But this like, this is the most diverse cast. I'm gonna say cast that we have. 
that we've had in a long time. Think of it, we had a, yeah. like a, the gay guy. Like we had a good gay. <laughs> I'm sure he loves being referred to <laughs> the, the gay, gay guy. guy. That's him. Yeah, good gay. He, oh, he's an indie guy. Um, yeah, he is. Well, I guess South, South Bend, Bend guy. Yeah. Um, you got him, and then you got old ass Bernie representing the old people, and you got Andrew Yang representing the Asian guys, people, know, and then you got the women in the race, and then you've got your. Do we even have a straight laced on the DNC side? Straight laced white guy just here to go serve country. <laughs> I don't think really. I would like, say the other Biden, guy, but like, no Biden. Get out of here. He's definitely. Yeah, I agree. Sleepy Joe. <laughs> but the oh one guy. God. There is one guy that wants to take away the the guns and stuff. I. That's. He's not. Yeah, as soon as he said see, that, he's here's not going to Here's the core that, problem, though. Is that, that guy's name? You are gonna like all I see from these candidates. And again, I'm not speaking for Yang. Um, I, I'm not in a, I'm not familiar enough with them. I think all of their the quote unquote big names. Um, now I'm just gonna say Biden, Warren. I'm gonna say Biden, Warren are like the quote unquote big names that people think of, like the the front runners in the, of the DNC. Yeah. I don't see any of them, either of them, attracting the same people that left the party in 2016. I don't see them kind of reaching out and like extending an olive branch right. to the yeah, moderate Republicans or libertarians. Um, and I, I think that you know. So, like, let's say hypothetically, who do you think would stand a chance against Trump? It's not going to be Biden. Remember how much yeah, Hillary. He's, he's already elbowed Biden to the ground by <laughs> now. But, but, like, think about this. Remember how much, like, Hillary. And I, I feel like that played a huge part or a decent part. Remember all those, like, health gaffes that she had along the campaign trail against yeah. Donald Trump of, like, fanning at 9 11, that kind of stuff? Yeah. This motherfucker is bleeding out of his goddamn eyes on national television, and at the primary, is not even over yet. Like he has no chance. Like he's he's, done, he's, he's a goner. And like, Warren, I you know I just don't think that she will be able to go toe to toe with Donald Trump in the debates. I don't think she has that. What what do we say? Machismo or the. Um, the the gravitas. I think that Donald Trump is going to say that. Like, remember that stupid shit, Moxie. But yeah. the Moxie. But remember that shit, shit that she was like one hundred twenty thousandth Native American or whatever. Yeah. I think he's going to hammer that point into the goddamn ground, <laughs> and I think it's going to piss off actual Native Americans and like other like you know minorities. Be like, well, you're just trying to protect. You're white. You're clearly yeah, white. You're, you're trying to utilize yeah. and like take advantage of resources that we need yeah. to get into Harvard or wherever the hell. And like. I don't see her surviving a, a debate against him. No. Um, if Yang is making these big waves, like you're saying, man, I could, I could get behind that. I, I could get behind that for sure. He's a smart guy, and it, my favorite one is when, he, like, my favorite interview he's had is when he goes on to um, the Daily Show and he went with Trevor Noah. And Trevor Noah, <clears throat> yes, he's a obviously he's a Democrat, but he's just like John Stewart in the fact that he's pretty fair when they're at the desk. Sure, he ribs them when they're not there, but when he's at the desk, when you're on the show, with the, yeah. whoever it is, even if it's Trump, whatever, he gives you good, solid questions that you can either answer and confront or you're going to, there's no middle ground or you're going to run away. It's going to look like you're running away from the question. Yeah. There is no like generic answer you can have with these questions he asks and you should watch it. I swear, it's like seven minutes long, whatever. Okay. And he answers these questions with such like precision like it's like a surgical thing. It almost people are like, oh, this is so like staged. And so like, I'm like, it's, that's how good of an answers it were. Like, because he wasn't getting him like you know softball questions. Yeah, he was giving him questions that made you be like, wait, yeah. So how is that gonna work for you? Or like, wait, what? Like it's like <laughs> stuff like that. And it's like <laughs> I would expect Trevor Noah of all people to really get into that. You know, I wouldn't say like area, but really get into that. Help, like um candidate because it seems like he really pulls for the guy. Hmm. And so uh, you, when you see someone like ribbing into him right in front of you, it's kind of like, oh, so this is like a this is like a interesting thing for me. That's that's really where I started the Yang train because the way that he it's answered Yang those, train those or tra- Yang gang. It's Yang gang. Yang gang. But it could be any type of Yang you want. Okay. He's a Yang. He's a Yang. <laughs> He's a Yang dude. But it's just interesting. I mean, I I think you're right with the uh, all the other candidates, I think they're all a bunch of, I, I think they're all just trying to, they're all playing to get into the game. They're not playing to stand out. You know, they're all trying to just get a spot. And, and I don't think it's really going to make you stand out. Like Yang's trying to stand out. Yeah. And he's doing things that people will notice him. That's why he's climbing up slowly as an unknown now to one of the top three in there. Yeah. So the way that he's been moving 
I, I don't see him slowing down anytime soon. It, it's like it's very reminiscent to how Trump started. Trump was, was a joke. Everyone was laughing at it. And then all of a sudden, there you go. He's in the final final four, baby. It's like, what is happening? It's going to happen. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's the same type of thing. It's very similar. It's very similar. Yeah. And I don't like – and Bernie, I think this <laughs> – I think he's, you know. <laughs> Bernie. I liked him. I like him still, you know. But I, I think that this gaff – Health kill. <laughs> he's done after that. I think he's done. I don't what, think what health kill. It's like, dude, you had like a, a heart attack. Like, and you're yeah. expecting to lead. The, there's yeah, no way. No there's no. He's out. That he probably was like, ah, damn it. Like, wait, you can't, like, no, I'm just worried about my campaign. Like, fuck. Hey, he's done. I don't know how he has to have one hell of a um, campaign manager or like wh- where you call those guys what i'm going to go Chief as far as staff, say whatever it's impossible it at this point to flip this and be like oh it's fine <laughs> like he's publicist i, think if, I didn't want to call him <laughs> like who hasn't had chest pains every <laughs> now and then come on this is the perfect time to sponsor <laughs> some type of <laughs> <laughs> no, he's gonna segue that into i survived because of the free health care <laughs> <laughs> see if i wasn't <laughs> if i didn't have the money <laughs> It works, guys. So you should be his fucking public. <laughs> right. Get him a job, guys. Come on. That was on the spot, too. That was, that was, that was good. pretty off good. The cuff. Off, the, off cuff. the cuff. I'm sorry for downing you, Bernie. <laughs> um, so, but like, okay, so I, Tulsi got me excited back into like, okay, I'm going to tune in actually to this next debate because, you know, she seems like the dark horse candidate. Um, Yang seems like he's making some moves. I need to, after this podcast, I'm going to look into him tonight because I, I want to believe again, Luke. I want to like. I think that, that a lot of people in 2016, a lot of Democrats, because um, I was a Democrat. Now I'm kind of like I guess, I guess a libertarian or something. I don't You're know. In, but in the air. I'm whoever just, makes yeah. sense. Whoever makes sense to you. Sure. That's, whoever that's I think will do a better job. Be, yeah. Honest. Whoever. But like I, I think a lot of people at hearing how the DNC kind of treated Bernie and seeing that result, I think it affected our generation more than our parents' generation because. We kind of have we're more proficient with things like Twitter, you know, um, Mm -hmm. kind of alternative news sources and that sort of stuff. Whereas our parents generation kind of get a lot of their majority of their information from TV shows. So they see one kind of side. And if, you know, the TV shows kind of want Hillary to win, you're kind of going to get the best stuff from, you know, her. So, like, I think that that ended up causing a wound in the DNC that has jaded a lot of people. And I. I'm willing to be won back, you know, like win me back. Show, show me something like <laughs> we'll see something cool. Show and like the money. Um, hopefully, you know, Yang can do it. But honest to God, like I, I don't know if we talked about this in the Thanos and Biden episode that we did way back in the day. But I don't think that unless there is a miracle from one of these like, you know, you know from Yang or Tulsi or someone like that, I think that Donald Trump has his election on lock. I think if Bernie goes, I think, rest his, pe- rest his soul, but like, I think if, if, if Biden goes up against Trump, it's a loss. Oh, it's a loss. Yeah, I think if Warren goes up against Trump, it's a loss. But like, the reason why it's so easy, it's not so easy, but it's, I can see it more now than ever that a president, a defending champ can lose because, like I said, there's nothing, there's no one else to really blame this on. So when people are coming after you in the last two the, the presidential election, yeah. there's no one else to, to, to defer it to. Like, it was all you, Trump. You've been here for four years. Show us what you've done. Show us what didn't work, how you're going to fix what didn't work, and prove these people who are running against you wrong that you actually do know what you're doing. Yeah, There's no – you can't run away this time. Before, when he was the attacker, it's easy to attack and accuse people and say, I'm going to do it better. True. Really easy to do that. But defending yourself, just like in court, like defending yourself is the hard part. No, I swear to God, I didn't do it. All right, well, but, prove me that you didn't do it. <laughs> but also think about this. What, okay, if you're trying to attack him now, what new things can you say about him that haven't already been said no, in no. the past six years? I wouldn't use new things. I, would, I wouldn't use old things. I, They're I'd not going to listen to old no, things. I'd just like, go off your like, policies. I'd just go off what, what this, here's what you promised when we elected you. Yeah. That you would know, be their only shot. That's what you're supposed to do. But then, but think about that. Hold Com- him accountable. You didn't do what you're supposed compare to Compare that, though. You've got this guy. He's had uh, P tapes. He's had Russian meddling. He's had impeachment. He's had Hands everything. Full of pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Grab him by the pussy. <laughs> All this stuff thrown at him, and he has come out on top of it. 
So he has right. he's dealt with all this stuff, and now you have someone new. You have a Warren or a Biden or someone like that that is coming in that he has now he can go back through their entire political history. Right. He has so much more ammunition. His but ruthless I think you're still missing staff. it. I still think you're missing a little okay. bit. Is what, I, what I'm saying is like he's still like when I am, am giving you a debate, you know, like the old saying, like once someone goes personal, you've lost the fight. Right. Right. You know, you have no more facts to give. So now you're just trying to hurt me. Right. Right. That's what Trump is going to do. <clears throat> we have all the car facts on him. Including the personal stuff, but let's say we throw all that personal stuff out. Who cares about it, right? We want you to lead a country. Don't care about that. Let's just say, hypothetically, people can get past that. Now, we're just going to look at your plans versus ours. He can't speak in terms on par with those people. He may have more information because he's the president right now. But I'm saying in terms of success and in terms of what can work and what will work, he will not be able to hang with them. With a politician and how to speak know, on dude. policy, he won't be able to do it because what he did the whole time, like you said earlier, he just abused. Not, he didn't say abused, but you said he disrespected the whole thing. Mm-hmm. He was just attacking people. Jeb Bush, Sleepy Joe, Sleepy Doc- Jeb. Doctor, whatever it was, like Carson. You yeah. know, like he was just taking personal shots, and everyone's like, "Yeah," because people remember what you say about him personally more than they than you talk about their work. You know, how you feel is more important than how they. It's so like when you were talking like in their debates. More people than not are going to remember the, like you said, the Warren thing, the one millionth percent Native American or whatever. Mm-hmm. They're going to remember that more than the fact that she said something really nice about the troops and how she plans to end the war or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's what he does. And that's the way it works because, oh, Trump really took it to her. She had no defense for why she put that on her Harvard admission. Why does that matter? <laughs> why Why does that matter? Why couldn't he? I mean, I, I know it matters for a small amount of matters. people, like you I said. I think he could twist it so that it wouldn't oh, matter. But, but, but you see what I'm saying now. It's like he's just but using here's personal the thing. things. He's not giving an actual the reason, concrete these finishing are, sword move, right. whatever the hell you want these to These are you know, career politicians for the most part. The reason why Tulsi completely destroyed Kamala from the point that she never recovered was that she went back through her political career. And picked out something that she did hypocritically, what she's talking about now, mm. and then just blew it up for millions of people to see. She fell off. She never recovered. Now, everyone has done that to Donald Trump. You know, he has no fucking – that's the – so. this is – our country's so weird. He has no <laughs> real political career. So it's just like he's got four years as the fucking president. That's it. He wasn't a congressman or anything like that. Whatever. But so like – he has all this fresh material. He has personal, and he will use personal. But now he can go back through every little – and he has campaign managers and people on his staff that will meticulously comb through anyone that survives the Democratic primary to come up against him. So he will just unleash a cavalcade of personal and professional attacks against them, probably find some sick demonic way to twist it all together and just create these it, – it's going to be tough if not impossible. I, I think that – you need someone that will bring – it cannot be Trump Repu- with Republicans versus Biden or Warren with just Democrats <laughs> again. It's going to be a repeat of 2016, and please, for the love of God, America, <laughs> make the right choice. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> Let's not do that again. We have to have a different angle of attack this time. Let's just use, Let's just use some math here. Let's just use some math. <laughs> But honestly, real quick, last question here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think a president can, a, a candidate, a presidential candidate can win by being honest? Because Lord knows in the years that I've been alive, every single one has said something that, one, they just weren't, they know they wouldn't be able to accomplish. They'd be able to start it, but they wouldn't yeah. be able to finish. And it just, you know, you just got to, you got to give people hope, kind of like in a way of like you have a little kid and you're just yeah. kind of like, hey, uh. You know, Santa's coming. You know, it's like eh. you hey, know, it's a lie that helps the cause. I'm gonna go run and get some smokes from the gas station. I'll be right back. I promise. Right. In that way, do you think they could be honest? Do you think they would win? No, I think I no. That's the saddest thing. I think that that at some level you have to compromise yourself. Um, and I don't know what level if that's like state level or something to move ahead because you have. Eventually, like, that's what makes it so impossible is that, like, the sitting, you know, president has a salary of, like, it's a paltry, like, yeah, $400,000. So then you have all these lobbyists that come in and, like, just like, hey, the or these, you know, people that are just like, hey, here's $50 million to help your campaign. 
why don't you go ahead and like pander to, you know, promote smoking a little bit? This is dramatic, of course, but like, why don't you kind of take this side when people bring up smoking? Why don't you kind of, so you start off, I'm sure every single one of them for the most part started off genuine and pure, but I think that they realize that if they are trying to go up against a juggernaut, like rival or something that ha- already has that established standard that they need to compromise a little bit at first, then a little bit more, then a little bit more to yeah, take other yeah. donors' money to go eventually. Because I mean, know, that, that, I mean that kind of works as like you explained it pretty well. Because at that point, once you're the last two fish in there, yeah, it's either me or him, or yeah. me and her. So choose. Like now, you can be a little demanding about it, and you can really be yourself because you're accepted already. I think You've that's why Trump far. got so far, to be honest, <clears throat> because I think that people saw that he had his own money and like he wasn't he didn't need donors. Yeah, he didn't take the presidential salary either. I can't wait to like read the history books in like 10 years and be like, let's see just like, because you know, you'll have like these tell-all books and stuff like that come right. out eventually and like, well, this is what really happened. This is what, yada, yada, yada. I can't wait to see like just get the whole picture on what happened because it is a fast, it was a fascinating touchstone in our country's history in 2016. My favorite thing to do is look at the presidential portraits online. <laughs> and it's just like you just get all of them in the in the rows, you know. Yeah. And it just clearly you just look like you don't belong. <laughs> it's just it's like, like one of these like things. They all look so professional. It's just like his. It's like <laughs> some gargoyle looking at you. Oh. All right, but it's enough about politics, man. Well, we'll you know we'll be talking probably more about that stuff as we oh, get as it deeper goes, into the uh, the cycle. And now that you know, have you been following the DNC stuff this whole time? Um, it's just a little bit because I like to go a little later on when it's okay. the actual people we vote, yeah, vote on. There you go. And okay. then you then you go do your research at home. But I do have a friend that um, often sends me things. Yeah. And we talk about it when he sends me those things. So that's how I know the little information that I do Yeah, is from, well, obviously YouTube and stuff like that. But, yeah, just the conversations I've had with him. Who's in uh, – this guy in the Navy, big uh, Republican guy from down south. Oh, boy. But he's very – he's very – um level-headed like he's yeah. not he is Republican. he'll say christian republican whatever went to liberty at first they were like very you know straight laced this is what you know god is here yeah and he's he, pure that's the, all that stuff and, but he still he keeps his head on it he knows when they're wrong he knows when we're wrong when i say we i mean democrats yeah. and he knows it's just how you're supposed to be you can choose a side but just don't let it blind you that's the thing that's i started the, to learn when i got to be about 21 22 uh, living on my own and then kind of just meeting people from different walks of life is that, you know, Republicans aren't these like scary, not, I mean, I'm yeah, sure there's yeah. some are, but right. like yeah. not these scary racist white guys that hate everyone yeah. and hate women and that kind of stuff. They just have different principles and morals that they believe. And some of them are one issue voters. Like, I mean, it, it's, I think that, you know, everyone has their own reasons for doing what they're doing. And I, I the last thing our country needs is to get more divided. And I, that's that's the truth. That's dude. That's something else too. Is that like, you know, what if what if Don in a long shot? I don't think it's gonna happen. But what if Donald Trump loses in twenty twenty, and they have been pushing this narrative about uh, illegal voting and like rigged ballots and that kind of stuff, and his base is already so riled up that they would secede. Like another civil war, <laughs> I, dude. We may this may be like the last good year of America. <laughs> okay. All right, now you're getting a little. See, that's when our political conversation goes over the cliff. Now, now, now it's just becoming some type of what if I bought movie, all this movie, storable movie. food and I've got I've got this bunker, I've got Cloverfield <laughs> stalking, you know, got a movie script ready to go for anybody who's listening. Man, what else do you want to talk about? We got about like a half an hour. You want to talk about something a little bit lighter hearted? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't like thinking about the future of America. No. It doesn't it doesn't ever end well. Yeah. It's got its perks every now and There's then. There's never any unicorns in the story. <laughs> no leprechauns. No pot of gold. Not it's yet, just, anyway. Just mass destruction. Well, when the lo- <laughs> when the looting starts, there sure will be pots of gold around. They're just well, if it's be- looting, I hope it's either like Borderlands looting or like... <laughs> Luke, it won't be. <laughs> Someone's like, wait, you want this. it to be a dystopian future with nothing to do? It's like, yeah. yeah, I want it to be Pandora. Can you imagine if the internet goes, like, how crazy would that be? 
like a, the internet just gets wiped. Someone has to like, say, oh, fuck it. See, We're that's done. what I don't get about nerds online that like are so obsessed about the end times and like, or not end times, but like yeah, the- Those uh, nerds. The, yeah, this, sorry. Who thinks sorry about that? If I offend you guys. <laughs> but like those, like the doomsday preppers that are like, yeah, it's going to be great. I've been practicing shooting my AR-50. Dude, but imagine the a... jizz level, the moisture that you'll have when that day comes. <laughs> it's like, I knew it. He's you like, fuck off. I can't wait to go on Facebook to tell. Oh, oh wait. There's oh, wait. no fucking face. There's the internet's Or down. it's just the Skynet. And yeah. You're fucking hiding in your bunker from goddamn Terminators. <laughs> the Alexa suddenly becomes like sentient. And it's like, Dude, I saw what you did, Tom. That's scary. That is scary. That's actually going to be scary. Let, I'm going to do some research. We're going to have another episode talking about yeah, that. I think that'd be really Because I just watched them. Mark Cuban's big on robotics, too. And they're taking your wage and oh, Jesus. don't have to pay them. God. They don't have to go to the bathroom. Like, he had a yeah. bold little talk on I it. I mean, it, it's a cold-hearted CEO that totally makes company, sense. It's robotics why... company. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so I'd like to talk to you about that, too. <laughs> but transitioning not too well into a slew of new content, content in the video game world came out. Yes. Did you indulge it a little bit? No. No. <laughs> None of the new? None of the new. None I, I indulge. Anything but... new for you, though, that you indulged in? Maybe not be new, but new for you. Yes. Yes. Um, so I I did, I dabbled, I got a, um, what was it, like a 14, 30 day, what? How about? You want to lead off? Let's go I, with a. Top five, top five games we played in the summer. Top five games we played in the summer that aren't something that is super old that we just play for filler. Like everyone has those buffer games, right, like right, Madden right. or something. Right. You know, something that is new for you or just new in general that you got to play the summer in your top five. Okay, so um, Devil May Cry Five. Are you going one to five? <laughs> that is one. Okay, <laughs> that so is always one. Let's go one to five down. <laughs> one so to five, five to two. Five to one. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's supposed to be, All right. you know, build uh, up. <laughs> <laughs> Devil May Cry 5. <laughs> number five. Devil May Cry 5 is number five as well. Devil May Cry 5 is number four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, what was it? Um, Final Fantasy 14. I tried dipping my toes into that because after we had our classic WoW talk like, way back at the beginning of the summer, I had that itch. It's like, right. I want to, I want to play... Some MMORPGs. It, yeah, so it was an MMORPG, and um, I got to level, I think, 70 in my two months of playing it, um, and I have mixed feelings on it. Level 70. Level It's level... Jeez. S- no, level 60, I'm sorry. Oh. Level 60. So basically the base game has a level cap of level 50. Then they have an expansion that came out in like 2015 called Heaven's Heaven Heaven Sword. <laughs> it's supposed to be Heaven's Ward. I'm pretty sure, Heaven, but oh. it's Japanese as fuck, so it's Heaven Sword. It's all one word. Um, and oh, okay. then they have right. another one called Stormblood, and then the final one that came out this summer actually is called Shadowbringers. Okay. And oh, I, that's the one with the Tom Holland commercial. Yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was. Yeah, he was playing. Um, so I started it from level one, and I started playing it, and I'm like, this is kind of a cool, it's a very polished MMO, and there's a lot of cool, like, because every now and then I get this urge to sink my teeth into a Japanese JRPG. I don't know why. Maybe it's, because I, I played. Because they're awesome. They are awesome. Like, they're great. The last time I had this urge, I played Xenoblade Chronicles for the Nintendo Wii, and that was like, <laughs> dude, don't even, that was my favorite game. That still is like in my top 10 of probably I'm really time. feeling it. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, there was, it was so charming. It was so well done. So I was like, okay, I'm feeling that again. I hope, here's hoping, you know, if I get Final Fantasy XIV, I can play four different Xenoblade Chronicles for the price of one. Nope. Um, no. It's so. <laughs> no. It's a, it's a case. really interesting MMO, and I like it a lot because it has a lot of cool features that um, World of Warcraft doesn't have. And World of Warcraft is really my only other foray into the, the MMO market. And, like, so it's more immersive. Like, you have – you there's this console command called, like, C-Pose where you can basically cycle between all these different, I, different idling poses. Mm-hmm. So it's like you get this really in-depth – like customation. So it's like whenever your character stops, you can have your hands down at your sides, hands down your hips, this so, weird cross sit kind of thing. And so like, those are the things that you're interested in. I'm interested in like seeing. You're being... worse than the 12 year olds that play <laughs> Fortnite for their skins. No, I'm just saying it's like really in depth. So like take that little like 
this is a totally useless feature that no one and applied to almost everything in the world. There's, there's like, you know, instruments you can get okay, that you yeah. can play in the game that like you can choose like a virtual keyboard and play all these like Legend of Zelda songs if you want to, <laughs> except you can't get caught because you'll get banned by, <laughs> for <laughs> copyright infringement. Nintendo! <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's really cool. There's a lot of depth and polish into it. My biggest gripe and the reason why I put it down is because they don't have any kind of like catch up mechanics at all. So like mm. you basically, if you want to play like the latest expand, because like I would have played Shadowbringers. Right. That's that. This seems like the Tom Holland is talking about it. Yeah. I like, guess hype shit. Like, it starts like, at level seventy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, so it's like, it's like you you're not there be, yet. <laughs> you have to be level seventy to play it. So I'm like, but here's the thing. Not only do you have to be level 70, you have to have completed the main story quest line for each single expansion before that. And that is an investment of, like, hundreds of hours. So to basic- be fair, it came out a while ago. Yeah, so but if they're assuming the player base has been following along the journey. Not someone who's just hopped on the hype train. But then they're not <laughs> trying to attract new players. So like, Yeah, there you go. It's a problem. It is a huge problem. So, like, I basically, I had to play through 2000 in, like, 12 quest design for an MMO, oh, yeah. which was the worst experience I have probably almost ever had playing a video game because a it's like, like take this quests. object, yeah, yeah, take this object, deliver it over here, yeah, go across somebody. the continent. Yeah. And you have to do all this because it's not like with like World of Warcraft where like if you want to play with your friends at level, you know, 80 or whatever, you can just like quest in this zone and this zone, leave when you want to, move to the next one, leave it, just get there however you need to. Yeah. With this, you have to follow the same path all the time. Smell you. And I eventually just mm. kind of gave up on it. <laughs> how, like, did you, how far did you get? I got I got to 60. Um like um, I got the, the I got the heaven the sword, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I had, but here's the heaven thing: sword. is that once the base game for Final Fantasy XIV is completed, they have these filler quests. They call them Patch Two Point X because oh, you go Patch Two Point One to Two Point Five. Nothing came out. It was they were preparing for the next expansion, so you have a baseline of a hundred more quests that you have to do. That even no, the no. own diehard player base no. says they are atrocious. So I just bought the fucking skip, and I went straight to Heaven Sword. And to be fair, there's a skip. They, there's a skip. They know. They the know people, it's they that know bad. That it's, oh they know it's that bad that you have a skip. No, don't leave. <laughs> they, they know it's that bad that That's they terrible. have a skip. It's like this fourteen dollars. This is top five games you've had. Because I played so little. Yeah. <laughs> this is top five. This, is not... <laughs> this would not be top five in a regular environment. <laughs> um, and so I played that, and and heaven to its credit, Heaven Sword is where the game really starts to pick up. Because but before that, it is. It is two characters standing at each other during the quest, dialogue boxes, no voice acting, no cinematic cut. It's the driest, bland, it's boring as shit. See, dialogue box, like if it's just dialogue box and no talking, it has to be on handheld. For me, to really, for me to really accept But you it. can't skip it either. Oh, okay. You can't skip. You can like adjust the scroll. Yeah. Luke, this game almost drove me insane. Like, you have no idea. But the main features you can't it's go like, around, but the ones, like the little intricate <sighs> things you can, oh my. They, they really put all their time and budget into. Well, they never <laughs> thought, they never thought about, oh, well, I hear this game is pretty good. Let's try out. Let's, I want to start this game. You know, this, this Final Fantasy XIV seems to be yeah. getting a lot of traction. Let's try it out in 2018 or 2019. You start back feasibly in 2012 or 11 whenever it came out. It's and like when Plankton go got the Krabby Patty formula. He's like, <laughs> what are you going to do now? He's like, honestly, I didn't think I got, I would get this far. <laughs> so that was, that was five. Um, Let me get five. Okay. You do five. You would be happy because you've played this. Okay. And, you, and you say it has a close relationship with your heart. Okay. And it recently just came out. Star Wars yes. Jedi Outcast. Ah. You played Jedi it Jedi 2 Outcast, sorry. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I had never played it before. I played Academy. <laughs> yeah. Briefly. I did not play. Academy was actually the game that I loved the most. The most. But, yeah. But I am in the middle of still playing it. PC? No. Switch. Oh, that's rough. Okay. What? Why is it rough? Because uh, I played Academy uh, on Xbox, and that, that's hard to play, man. The only time it's hard is because, for some reason, they say it's, like, remastered. But for our modern TVs, it doesn't work because some things are just too dark now. You can't just fucking see anything. Oh, so it's like, yeah. it's like the first level, you get sent down, and you're, like, uh, like underneath the R-wing or whatever the hell it is. And you're like, all right, go to the... 
objective. And I'm like, where the fuck do I? I'm like John Travolta in that, <laughs> that gif. I'm like, what, what? And sure enough, like when I turn my TV brightness up, now I can see the little bridge that's the same palette as like that. Yeah. And, you know, I'm like, all right, well, I'm trying to walk. Same palette as the walls. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, well, then all of a sudden I turn the corner. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh cool. Nope, I've died Thursday. like 16 times already. Oh, my God. And I started it. Um, I'm in the second section, almost at the end of the second section. I do I do love how – I haven't got my lightsaber yet, though. But I do like how you met, it's, met still, it's still fun. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's still fun. Like, it's all these years later. Yeah. It's good. It's, it's not really like it's bad design. You know, like, it's still – fluid it's still i mean the only thing unrealistic about it other than it being you know fantasy is stormtroopers for some reason actually have good aim and it's pissing <laughs> me off <laughs> like, like, yeah. so it's like all right and i actually one. shoot them 18 times they don't die it's like, <laughs> it's like fuck <clears throat> but it's a really fun game i highly recommend it if you haven't gotten it but okay it's like well obviously you've got it but i'm talking about anyone else but it's uh it's it's one of those things that i wish they should have made your character more customizable. You know, Jedi Academy. Not, yeah, not, a not like, character. yeah, I don't like how you, you oh, can customize your right. equipment, but you can't. Yeah, I get like, it. I don't want to see that guy. <laughs> He's a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, don't like him. Fuck him. But yeah. that's a, it's a good game. Yeah. Um, I highly recommend it. It's $10. $10. And it's mm-hmm. on, you know, everything else too. It's not just Switch, but it's on all the main platforms now. Uh, That's dope. Number four for me. Uh, I would say is a mobile game called Epic Seven. Never heard of it. It is like a Final Fantasy kind of light game on your mobile tablet. Epic Seven. And I was recommended to me because it has some really good video game like gameplay. But it's Japanese as shit, and mm. I can't play that game <clears throat> in public. Like oh, I can't oh, play. Oh, because it's got some. It's got some questionably looking like girls in it. Um, um, yeah, that's it comes, it comes with the territory. It's yeah, yeah it, unfortunately, it comes with the territory. As any person who plays any kind of Nintendo Japanese yeah. game knows, it's, it's like fantastic. Fire Emblem Heroes or something like that. Like, <clears throat> it's it's really good though. I would really recommend it. Um, it's it's super customizable, super in depth, and they they seem to treat their player base pretty well. It's like one of those turn, um, turn based, turn based, yeah, like turn based. Not like a tactics, but turn based. Like you're facing each other, and kind of like Final Fantasy VII. Type yeah, it's like base. literally yeah. like Final yeah. Fantasy VII. Like and it, it's super fun, and it has, actually has a good like main story too. So you don't just like, eh. mm-hmm. I, I did for a bit, but <laughs> <laughs> right, fuck. <laughs> I know someone's in trouble. Yeah. We need to get the crystal back. Arch demon, arch demon, whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> the church is in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like that's a all right. What's for, for mobile you? games? Not really. I don't have a. A lot of faith in mobile games these days because Mario Kart Tour just came out games. and it kind of just devastated my love for oh, yeah. mobile games. <laughs> the only one I play now is still Clash Royale, but that's about it. Number two or number four would be, I never got around to it. It's another older game, but mm-hmm. it's fantastic. Rise of the Tomb Raider. Really? Mm-hmm. The second, huh. game, second game with a new reboot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I saw it was 20 bucks like for the 20th, 20th edition, 20th celebration edition or whatever. Got all the DLC and all that stuff, and I had a cool little book case. Took that bitch, played it. Surprisingly, way more badass than I thought it would be. Mm. I thought yeah. it would just be Uncharted 2.0, copy right. the formula. But, it, no, it's got its own thing. The only thing I don't like is they try to make her – it's Tomb Raider, so it, it, it should have been more Tomb Raiding. But it's just a lot of mass murder. <laughs> like it's just a lot of killing. I, I, they should have put more emphasis on the, you know. I sure I'm jumping in after the first Tomb Raider. I don't mm-hmm. know what the first Tomb Raider, not the one PS One that we grew up with, but the new reboot. Yeah. I don't know what that story was, but I'm sure they're, you know, connecting the story. But at the same time, as Laura, you don't Lara, sorry, you it's don't Lara, do, Lara, yeah, you don't do anything that makes me like, oh, I am a Tomb Raider. I am. Yeah, an archaeologist or whatever the hell you want to be. Like I am just someone who is here to defend the rights of all these people. Like, no, I didn't sign up to be a superhero. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I didn't was, ask for this. I didn't do that stuff. The cool part about the first Tomb Raider and stuff like that, because you're, you're like wandering the tomb, going through. All of a sudden, a T Rex fucking pops out. You're like, what the <laughs> hell is this? This is underneath the world. This is underneath the city, the Lost Kingdom. That's the type of stuff you got interested in. 
Now it's just like, it's a good story. It was a great game. It's a fun time. Put a lot of puzzles in there and all that stuff. But it's just like, that's the stuff that is the Tomb Raider stuff, is the extra stuff. Mm-hmm. Not this like, so like, you find an artifact and it tells you some fake thing about some fake universe. <laughs> I don't care about that. And then, and then you do like a puzzle to get a, an extra skill point or an extra skill. Mm-hmm. Those are the only tomb rating that you do. Almost the two things that you do, just over and over again. They're different every time. I'm not complaining, but I'm complaining. <laughs> so it's like makes oh, sense. Okay. That's that's my number four. But it was great. The action's great. You know, they put some like crafting and stuff in there. I can't really complain about the actual combat and stuff like that. It's a fantastic job. Number three for me is gonna be Beat Saber. I remember talking about oh, that on the podcast earlier. Beat Saber's awesome, dude. Well, because that was the <laughs> first VR game I played, and oh my yeah, if you haven't played VR, that needs to be the first one you play. It really should be. So that way you don't you don't so, trash VR. Yeah. Same thing with uh, there's the, a lot of trash VR. The robot there. one, the rescue mission one, that one's really good. I haven't played but yeah, that. continue. Um, well, it's hard to describe it. Like I mean, it's like Guitar Hero for. You, you got know, your two VR sabers. wands. It's easy to describe, and, I guess. Yeah, you got your two <laughs> yeah, VR wands. Simple, One's actually. different color. Most of the time, it's red yeah. and blue. And you have arrows on cubes that fly at you. You put your VR headset on, so these are cubes that are just freaking flying at you. Mm-hmm. And you have to correctly slice the cube in the direction and color in that the cube is representing. Be. So if yeah. it's on the right side of a cube and an arrow is facing the left side, you have to slash it horizontally to the left with the right color that it also depicting. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty fun and it goes through your favorite music, you know, that type of stuff which makes it exciting and, you know, it's like... Well, a, you know, not my <laughs> favorite music but it's, it's good enough for <laughs> Right, them. it's good enough yeah. but then there's also mods like people make and like downloads. I've for seen you. it, yeah. Seen They're pretty it, fun so. ones. Like I've seen like the Imperial March for Star Wars. It's pretty funny. You have lightsabers like... Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool or like JoJo ones. I, there's Someone did the entire JoJo OPs like from from, <laughs> from um, Phantom Blood all the way to um, Diamonds Unbreakable. Yeah, and he did them all perfect. It's a crazy video. He's just like, foo, 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 foo. you know how anime mm. OPs just go They're from zero ridiculous. to <laughs> <laughs> like he's just he's like you he can hear him breathing. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a good video. <gasps> Beat Saber's it's it's a good game. Yeah, if yeah. if you have the money to fork over for a VR system, that's one that you definitely can't not have. <laughs> suggest you get the combo back. But yeah. Ooh. Did you play it with yourself or did you play it with somebody else? Someone else. So yeah, it's always fun. Yeah. Was it a girl? Maybe. Oh, okay. I don't know who. Move on. <laughs> All right, number three for me was, I would say, Astral Chain. What is that? So I'm sh- sure, you, uh, based off the way you said that, you've heard of it. I've heard of it. the trailer, name. maybe. Yeah. But basically, you're this cop in a mm, not dystopian but not perfect futuristic Blade Runner type mm-hmm. Tron world. Okay. More Blade Runner than Tron. <clears throat> you know? Um, and you're the son of or son or you can pick an avatar male, male or female. It's the same character. And the other one is your sister or brother. Mm-hmm. And you play as this, these, these cops that are trying to man- at the beginning of the game you're trying to manage like an outbreak of Chimera. And in that world, a chimera is in, like, <clears throat> the same way a chimera would be in World of Warcraft or something like that. It's not like a furry beast, like a big thing. It's like a a grainy, stony, like, flying, levitating, powerful beast type thing. But it's got, like, powers. <laughs> like, it's not just, like, a rabid animal. Okay. They invade, and I haven't finished the game, but I'm very close. They invade, and without getting spoilers, you use your newly found like weapon system of controlling them Mm -hmm. and then you go through different puzzles and fights with them at your side and you control both of them you the character and the new chimera that's called a legion at the same time and you try to just do combos you know and just pretty much it's another save the world game but it's really it's really fun it's like something way too ambitious than what it like games who are that ambitious uh, that are that ambitious usually don't end up either good or on time mm-hmm. or it not on Switch either or Nintendo. So I'm very surprised that they were able to do that. It's definitely something different. It's definitely a breath of fresh air for sure. Instead of, you know, having the old, you know, it is a, the, the, the theme is still kind of the same, but the story and the action is really where it shines. It's just like you feel 
it's not one of those games like Witcher. I can go back right now, even if I haven't played in like a year or two, play for two minutes and be like, boom, I know exactly what I need to do, how to play it, and how to play these enemies. This game, every time I come to sit down, I have to like have like a 20 minute learning curve again because mm-hmm. it's so <laughs> complex. It's, it's fun once you do it because it feels satisfying, but it's definitely not a game if you want to just sit down and enjoy it for an hour. Yeah. Because you won't be able to do it because 20 minutes in, you're still going to figure out how to not die. But yeah, it's a good game. Two is going to be this game called Pathologic 2. This game was based on a, I believe it was like an early 2000s, like Russian, uh, like survival horror game where you're basically like this doctor or this surgeon sent to this town like that is dying of this mysterious plague. And it's like very meticulous in its survival mechanics. Like you have to drink, you have to sleep, you have to eat. Um, ammo is very scarce. There's this crazy melancholic atmosphere. And, you know, 15 years, whatever, how many years later, these guys got a Kickstarter and they funded it. Mm-hmm. And they made this, um, this the sequel to it. And I'm only a few, like, I'm very shortly in. But if you liked Majora's Mask, if you like these different somber, like, it's not even like a horror game. It's like it just fills you with just, a, such an uneasy sense of dread. Like half of it is in very like Russian nature. It is like very mysterious. It is everyone's walking around and it's like surgical uh, plague doctor hats. But oh, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, <clears throat> it is. It is so Weird. interesting. And it's like I'll have more to say about it later. But like it has made such a first impression on me already that I – I would highly recommend buying it. It, it, it is so, so interesting. Um, How'd you hear about it? Just internet? I li- well, like I like the first, past? I played the first game a little bit. Um, just, I'd never got very far because it was like really in like incomprehensible Russian like translation and stuff. So I was like, well, this guy could respect it, I guess. <laughs> but um, uh, it was kind of coming out again. I forgot it came out and it was just, hmm. I don't know, man. It, it's, I can't find the right words to describe it. Like it's like mysterious and like somber and you're you just, you get this such a unique feeling when you're in that town. Um, Cause I'm playing as, as the, is this not the surgeon? Um, yeah. The, yeah. The surgeon right now. So there's different classes or not, not classes, different playthroughs. People. There's different, three different oh. characters. Yeah. That's awesome. Like the that. surgeon, the doctor and the, the, uh, I don't know, fucking, Valkyrie or some shit. <laughs> the Valkyrie. I, I, don't, I don't know. What <laughs> <the other one. laughs> yeah. But like to give you an example of like how crazy weird it is. Like if you like weird Japanese shit, kind of this. Try some weird Russian shit. Like for example, like you were on a train in the beginning, and um, the train crashes and it gets derailed. And as you exit the train, you find this giant immovable living bull. Blocking the path of the train tracks. When you say giant, how giant? It's it is. I know, I know what you have because it looks like a triceratops. Yeah, like there's it, you, two you, triceratops. It's just I, as soon as I said that, it's a stupid question because if it's able to derail a train, it's, it's gonna yeah. be mad. It's not gonna and be then, just a normal bull. And the dialogue choices are so unique and weird because it's like I talked to the one of the guys standing there. He's like, oh, "Well, you know how stubborn bulls are. This might take a little while to remove it, but it's all cryptic and weird. It's so unique. You should check it out. It, I, I think will. it's for PC it's but, trailers." It's um, it's a trip. Highly recommend it. Oh, nice. I forgot to mention my honorable mention just real quick. It was gonna. It's Borderlands Three. I love the Borderlands series, but okay, I haven't yeah. played it yet, so I can't put it on the list. <laughs> okay. I have it. I have it in my possession, but I yeah. just haven't played it yet because I got a lot of games to get through. Number sure. two for me would be Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening. Oh yeah, the I remake. Everything you know about Link's Awakening, it's the same thing, but just looks better and feels better. It's amazing. Like I, I, I don't know how they could have gone wrong with this. Like, they literally ported it perfectly, and it looks absolutely. Like, the trailers you watch the gameplay, it does not look that way. Hmm. I mean, sure enough, it's the game. But I'm saying when you, it's, you know, what I'm saying like people say you, you haven't gone to Brazil until you see it, right? You know, right. Like, Machu Picchu until you see it. You know, okay, it's the same thing. It's, it's you don't really know how this beautiful yeah. this game looks. And so you play it on your TV. And it's actually really, really fun, too. I'm usually not the classic top-down Zelda guy. I like my mm-hmm. 3D Zeldas. But, you know, it's made me a believer. <laughs> um, one for me is a little gem I like to call Devil May Cry 5. And uh, that is the best action game 
2019. Fuck off, Sekiro. I will say the Astral Chain definitely borrowed from the Devil May Cry series. Yeah, I mean, it was iconic. It was the it first was of its kind. Like, God of War I can see the first where their Devil inspiration was. Yeah. For sure. I don't really have more to say about Devil May Cry 5 right now. Uh, I've already said I've, I've played it like five times and it still It's sucks. great. Just fuck it. Just go out. It's on Game Pass. It, it's on literally Game Pass. You can get it for like $2 if you get Game Pass Ultimate. It comes with all that stuff. Yeah, but we don't want to promote digital downloading. <laughs> we want to preserve the physical disc. Sure, Luke. You and your fucking <laughs> block. <laughs> Number one. Number one for me, <clears throat> Fire Emblem Three Houses. Oh, yeah. Phenomenal game. Absolutely, like, one of the most time-consuming and addicting games I've ever played. Is that for Post. Switch or the 3DS? Switch. Is 3DS it's the one that came out in July. Hmm. Is 3DS even a thing anymore? Mm-hmm. Okay. They are definitely going to die because they just released that Switch Lite. Oh. And 3DS, is that's definitely the swan song. 2020 is the last year for 3DS for sure. They, mm-hmm. they I think only like three games came out this year for 3DS. Hmm. But three houses, do you know the premise? It's just, you know. It sounds like factions. it's about three fucking houses. There's, there's, four, there's four factions, you know. <laughs> well, what kind of <laughs> mistranslation is that? There's, <laughs> well, it's fire four, that localization right. team. Like, well, there's four factions. There's one. We call it. There are three houses. <laughs> there are the three houses, but there are four factions. So there's three houses. The three houses that you sign up at the beginning. It's an academy phase that you're, you know, you're a mercenary son and you stumble upon the academy. And they want you, your dad back to work for them and, you know, keep them all safe, blah, blah, blah. Don't want to spoil anything. And you become a professor there. At the very beginning, that's not a spoiler. You become a professor and you teach these kids and then you can, you know, take them from other people's classes and teach them and, you know, RPG it all up. Three classes are the... Blue Lions, the Black black uh, Eagles, and the Golden Deer. I chose the Golden Deer with your boy Claude. Stand up, everyone in the Claudes. Um, they are all three. Those three things represent three parts of the, the world that they live in, the country mm-hmm. that they live in. One, the red one, the Eagles are the big empire. You know, the Lions are like, I don't know what the hell they are. They're, they are an empire, but they're not as big. And then mm-hmm. the the deer are like the alliance, the kind of like rebels, outcasts, like people just melting pot. And that game's so full of twists and turns and stories. Oh, the fourth one is the church. They, that all that all takes place. You know, the church is bad all the time. Okay. You know, no one can trust. It was churches. taken out in the English edition. <laughs> they misnamed it. But <laughs> there's so many twists and turns in that game. Right when you think you're like, oh, I can see this. This is obviously coming. This is coming. And all of a sudden. It comes, and you're like, oh, I knew it. And all of a sudden, right after you say, oh, I knew it, something else happens to that. Hmm. It's, it's, it's really cool. I'm in the second part, and literally every day after work, I've just gone straight there, hmm. straight to the couch to play that for another four hours, five hours. <laughs> I, just I got, bet the wife loves I that. Got, I, Luke, she hates it. She fucking hates it. But <laughs> I love, she, she said it yesterday, she goes, I hate watching this game. It's, <laughs> it's you know, Fire Emblem, you know, tactic, yeah. Yeah. top-down, you know, game. And Have her play Pathologic, too. I feel like that would freak her out. I don't think she'll... Yeah. She likes the happier games. Okay. Well. The darkest she's gotten has been Horizon Zero Dawn. Which isn't dark <laughs> at all, but okay. it's got killing some mechanical animals. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think... I don't think she likes... She likes Zelda. I could give her that one. She won't play Majora's Mask, though. It's too spooky. No, she's just scared of Ben's. She listened to the podcast. Oh, no. She See, look what you guys did. She's scared of waking up in Ben's... 10 inch cock in his face. Ah! I think I read a fan fiction about that one. What was that? Deadpool? Dad? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Fire Emblem Three Houses, go definitely buy. I'm sure you guys have it, but you need to play it. All you right. Know, you don't have a Switch, but you need to play it. Well, that was our nice little kind of like D um, palate cleanser, I guess, from the political talk, which also I kind of love. So like, tell me what you guys think. Uh, we kind of want to have our own voice and our own direction with what we go in the podcast, but I also want to be cognizant of what. You guys find enjoyable as well. If you want to have like a political episode and like in the second half, kind of like just a shooting the shit kind of thing, or if you'd prefer to have them both just kind of different, uh, just for, you know, archival sake. Yeah. But we, we do see the comments. Like last time we saw a comment that did suggest, hey, can you guys react to animations of other people or oh, an, yeah. an, anime in general? That's a good idea. Um, 
we, I don't know about re, like I don't know what you mean by react like the typical reaction channel. I don't know if that we're gonna go that route, but maybe <laughs> give our take. <gasps> hey, maybe give our take on yeah certain things. Like we'll I know talk, I know it was underneath them. the Ben Drown fan fiction. You know you liked that we were yeah. live looking at it, but I, I don't know if we if we'll talk about if we we'll want to go that direction. But we'll for see. sure we're hearing you. We're definitely reading the comments. All right. Well, as always, you can find us on iTunes and Spotify and, of course, YouTube for the video component as well. Although I prefer to listen to it on Spotify or iTunes because I'm always on the go. And, uh, yeah. And, Luke, where can people find you? Uh, Andy Chubbs with two Bs. Two Bs, people. Stop running in about that. <laughs> Jesus. There's two of and, them. And Instagram and on Twitter. At Digital Fireside. Also on Instagram at the Digital Fireside. Um List down in the comments your top five this summer. Let us know. And who or and or if you don't have game, not game person, if you're a political person, who you who you think's gonna be a dark horse, who you think's gonna win. I wanna hear you who guys, you guys talk got. about what no. we just talked about. Like your take on this stuff, because I think it's finally getting interesting. I'm gonna check out Yang tonight. I wanna see yeah. I want someone to give me hope, damn it, in the process. Um but in the meantime, you can always contact me at Alexander D. Hall. Big D. Big D on Twitter. And for any business inquiries, you can contact me at alexanderdhall13 at gmail.com. I couldn't get the just regular Alexander D. Hall. Some guy took it. It was probably Alexander Hall. <laughs> you know, probably. Watch it just be you from like 2010. You forgot your <laughs> just password. forgot my password. <laughs> Whatever. All right, jackass. Yeah. <laughs> took my name. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Peace. <laughs>